Apologies for the delay in this release. I'm currently in the middle of upgrading my motherboard so I can fit on more RAM and a better graphics card so I can speed up my video editing with more power. The inverted yield curve is the talk of the town right now and the stock market took a hit recently before taking a turn for the better at the end of the week. There's a flood of discussion in the media right now along with various YouTubers posting yet more clickbait thumbnails to put in more views and it's frustrating to see these assholes capitalise on a hot topic only to babble on for minutes at a time as they lack the knowledge or skills or balls to give any practical advice. You have no balls. I see. Okay. And your fathers had no balls. You were all a product of generations of ballless men who were either too weak or too frightened to stand up and take what was theirs. And one day, you will pass on your empty, shriveled sacks to your own pitiful offspring. Well, screw that. I'm going to tear this issue apart and give you my strategy for the current climate. Here we go. If you know anything about the inverted yield curve and what it means, then you're doing pretty well. So skip to the next chapter if you want, otherwise here's a quick summary. The US government uses instruments such as bonds sold to investors to cover part of their debt. Investors who buy that debt expect interest in return and the rate of interest is calculated from the level of risk in the government being able to keep up the payments. When you lend money to the government for a short period of time, three to six months for example, this is low risk to the investor as there's not much that could happen over such a short period of time. But this also gives very little opportunity for the government to do much with the money. So typically a short loan period would have very low rate of interest. On the other hand, if you were to lend the government money over a longer period, for example 10 to 25 years, then this represents a greater risk, where there could be several changes in government, wars, economic changes and so forth. But the government also has more time to make use of your investment, so overall longer loans provide a greater yield. So a normal yield curve represents a lower rate for short term borrowing compared to a high rate over the longer term, representing the normal upwards curve and optimism over longer term bonds, providing the greater return on investment. When the rates reverse and the curve is inverted, it suggests poor sentiment towards government growth in the long term and a greater risk in the short term. And investors therefore want a higher yield up front as they expect the economy to fall into a recession in the long term. The reason for this sentiment is that historically, a long term month to month inverted curve has always predated a recession. Since the 1980s, it has become a key and successful indicator for predicting another one. Some market systems even have built in indicators to spot and react to yield curves. Then once the media gets hold of it, especially when supported by significant world events like we have today, it can spook a highly sensitive market, creating a self fulfilling prophecy. Don't worry about the vase. What vase? That vase. The COVID recession that ran for two months during February to April in 2020 occurred just after the curve had inverted, so its impact was covered by the market reacting to the pandemic. The markets took a hit regardless, but as we can see, the market recovered spectacularly. Before that, we had the 2007 to 2009 recession when the US housing market bubble burst, causing the collapse of several key financial institutions, multiple government bailouts, and many people losing their homes. And before that, we had the 2000 dot com bubble crash that was triggered by the overinvestment in online businesses and the final nail in the coffin being the September the 11th attacks. But the most relevant is the crash between July 1990 to March 1991, where the government had taken on huge amounts of debt, inflation was increasing and the Fed started to raise rates. In addition, due to the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, the price of oil jumped from $17 to $36 per barrel and there were concerns about the long term supply. And the past recessions before that were largely influenced by the change in oil prices. So we know recessions tend to require catalyst, but they can be heavily influenced by oil prices and Fed rates. So when we're seeing record hikes in oil prices, concerns about supply, the Fed raising rates and growing pessimism about the market, it's almost a mirror image. And we could be looking at short term volatility, followed by pessimism and recession over the next one to two years. Oh my But here's a practical view. The yield curve can flip for minutes or hours at a time and assuming it's not reported doesn't have any major impact on the market. 
an inverted yield curve doesn't cause a recession and economies are often cyclical, transitioning from growth to recession and back again. It's only now that a meal is being made of it. So if we look at the history of the rate, it's been dropping since the 80s to record lows during the pandemic. So the rises we're seeing are nothing compared to what it used to be. The pandemic put the Fed in a situation where they had to provide support for businesses struggling to stay afloat. And as they pumped money into the economy to keep them alive, we have companies using their support funds to buy up more of their own stocks. Whilst a new generation of investors spawned from being stuck at home on the sofa with excess cash ready to be pumped into a recovering stock market. The Fed should have reacted sooner to inflation, but instead they allowed the stock market to heat up, reaching record highs and feeding investor sentiment and blowing up their egos. But the chickens have come home to roost. Inflation needs to be stopped, they need to raise rates aggressively and investors are reacting out of fear, causing yet another sell-off. And you just know that the highest cap companies on the market, those who ratted the most, almost with a straight line to the moon, namely the FANG stocks, AMD, Nvidia, Tesla, they are all begging for correction. If the Fed didn't take the necessary action and allowed inflation to get out of control, then those same stocks would inevitably drop in value anyway, especially for UK and EU investors such as myself. So what we need to do is accept that inflation and long-term pessimism on the market is just another factor to consider in our investment strategies. So here's my take. As one strategy, you could try selling on the next high and save your funds for another buying opportunity further down the road, hoping to jump on the chance to buy your stocks even cheaper. Threading the needle like this is one way of taking advantage of the situation, but that also means trying to guess when that bottom is and hoping others don't jump on before you. This strategy hasn't really worked out for me in the past as I don't like to invest in volatile companies that might react in this way. Of my entire portfolio, Qualcomm seems to be the only one that's taken a significant hit and I still think it's undervalued based on their continued significance in 5G infrastructure, plus their recent acquisition of Arriva from Vionia, which is further evidence of their growth in their driver system technologies. Being the only stock I own with a PE over 15, I cut my position by a third when the FUD made their original announcement. So although I have taken a significant hit so far, I have funds left over to buy back in at a later date and I think long term growth will make up for my short term losses. Now assuming a recession is on the way, investors could prepare for this by investing in companies that do well in a recession and the big winners are likely to be based on the fundamental needs of consumers. Think land, energy, food, and the unavoidable. Putting it bluntly, people need a place to live, food to eat, energy to use, places to bury their dead. So think about real estate investment trusts and energy companies, which are recently covered in different videos, links below. Think grocery and convenience stores, death and funeral services, or anything essential regardless of the economic situation. But I'm avoiding anything with a high PE. Denied. As much as the price to earnings ratio is just one of many fundamentals that go into stock selection, it's seen by too many investors as the staple of stock selection and the highest PE companies will be the first they abandon when the ship hits the fan. As for the bigger Nasdaq companies that took a hit, mainly the mega tech companies, you have an opportunity to buy them on the cheap. But bear in mind that long term, these may underperform. So I think the current price presents a trading opportunity. So if I do buy any of these over the next coming weeks, it won't be for long term. You could instead take your money out of the market entirely, but don't expect the banks to give you a better rate. You can bet though, those banks will be increasing their rates and making some decent returns. And banking and financial companies are another opportunity for growth. You could move into different equities, Bitcoin and gold for example, but I've never really been interested in stocks that were valued on sentiment and don't actually generate anything new. There are more fringe equities such as companies who specialize in holding rare assets where you can own a portion such as art, cars and even cows. They're interesting but their niche market and high overheads mean a high risk and costs eaten into a significant portion of your returns. So unless you plan to invest in the seriously long term, the general market has better options. I'm personally not going to give up on the current market. Warren Buffett is often cited as an example of this by his long-term Coca-Cola ownership, where he took advantage of the 1987 crash by buying up a huge portion of the company on a dip and today benefits from multi-million pound dividends. 
So smart investors should be taking a page out of his book, looking for good companies who could recover from a recession and where pessimism of the market presents a genuine buying opportunity for investors. The last thing you want to be holding right now are pumped up stocks and poor fundamentals, especially any who are not making a profit. Denied. And as for those types of companies, I recommend taking a look at Sark. Turtle Capital Short Innovation Fund, which is directly short in anything Kathy Wood does. If you've been following my channel, then you know I've made no secret of my disdain for her strategy, which has been pumping Tesla to ridiculous levels. Tesla, 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 Tesla. Tesla. Then selling it off on a high to offset her fading ARC fund, only to then pump it up again when it crashes. Is a nasty way to treat investors, especially when any idiot could see how buying Zoom when it was on a pandemic high was a bad idea. Or Robin Hood, which has yet to become profitable and is still a bad investment. Oh, and why not promote Coinbase and crypto whilst you're spending other people's money? I am shocked at what she buys and how she buys. She buys like someone who just started yesterday. And to then have the audacity to explain away her failing ARK fund by blaming investors for their lack of faith, that it's all going to turn around over five years. So I think if you were to look at the next five years, you, and, and if you were to give us that five-year investment time horizon, we are the closest you'll find to a venture capital fund in the public equity markets. A lot can happen in five years. Just look at what's happened over the last two years. I would never in a million years tell you, but you just wait. You just wait, Sarah, because when that thing comes back, who the hell has the right to say that? And if we compare the two funds, it's pretty clear which one is doing better. With everything we've been through over the last two years, COVID, trade wars, politics, war, and increasing speculation about a market correction, something had to give. The yield curve is just one of many indicators that points to a market correction being on the table, and history does suggest that this is exactly the environment it needs to thrive. But the yield curve is just one indicator, and how it affects the market is conjecture, and there are plenty of companies that do well through a recession and come out even stronger after capitalizing on the gaps left in the market by their competitors. So investors need to take a step back from the surface level research and easy returns from the last two years and they need to make more strategic choices. I would love to say I have some revolutionary new strategy, but my strategy remains the same. I avoid the hype, I invest in industries I understand and companies who operate with a profit and with well-valued fundamentals. Although my investment journey isn't free of mistakes, I have been adjusting it over the last few years and I've been able to withstand recent downward trends in the market and tend to stay in the green even at the most volatile times. Unfortunately, I can't cram my entire investment strategy into a 10 minute video and I've spent considerable time covering the majority of my portfolio through my channel and those videos should give you some idea of what my strategy is. What I will be doing is releasing a series of videos outlining the various elements of my strategy, which I think will offer a more substantial guidance for investors right now. I just need to make the videos and release them over the next coming weeks. So if you like the idea, remember to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out. If there's any particular strategy or company you want my thoughts on, please comment below, let me know. Until next time.